Okay, so today I'm starting off a series of videos on my Land Rover Diagnostic Tools. So first video is going to be on the Hawkeye, that was the first tool I bought. After that I had to go out and buy an Anacom, I'll explain why. And they're both perfectly good tools, neither of them are cheap, so I'll explain all that to you. Third video, then I'll go through and I'll show you how to, I reprogrammed my key fobs. And then we'll see where we go from there. Right, so here it is. This is the Hawkeye Diagnostic by Beermac. Uh, I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly. Beermac, Beermatch. Who knows? Anyway, this is the first diagnostic tool I bought. The uh, reason I bought this was because, well, I always, I mean, when I bought the Discovery, I always wanted to do my own mechanics anyway. Um, Problem is, I didn't realise the TD5 had so many sort of computers and sensors on it. So, uh, um, not long after buying it, I got the three Amigos coming up on the dashboard. You know, I didn't want to go and take it away and start paying ridiculous amounts of money just for people to plug a computer in. So, I thought I'll take the expense and buy this myself. Uh, I also wanted to get a new key cut as well, cut and programmed. I didn't want to go to Land Rover and get it done. So, I thought, well, great, I'll get this diagnostic tool. So, when I first got this, from looking at it, I thought, brilliant, you know, really sturdy sort of looking box here. You know, you can really sort of imagine this with a bit of oil over it. You can imagine dropping it, although I wouldn't advise it. Um, it also looks waterproof. Now, I have I know for a fact it isn't waterproof, so don't go getting it wet. Um, but, you know, it's quite a nice, it's like a, I don't know what it is, it's like a, almost like a rubber sort of coat into it. One thing I will say about it, which is a bit strange, is when you pick it up, it's really, really light. It's almost like it's an empty box. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit weird. So, you've got one port at the top here, and this plugs into the Landy, which I'll show you in a sec. So, uh, around about 1968, Volkswagen created the first onboard computer system. Um, this had some sort of scanning capability, where you this was the first time you could actually plug something into a, a, a car and start reading, um, you know faults and diagnostic faults and things like that um, then sort of uh, OBD came along which stands for uh, onboard diagnostics around about 1994 OBD2 came along now one of the good things about OBD2 was that it kind of standardized the the socket that they use um, the cable in other words between the, the tool and the car itself um, the DLC nope not downloadable content uh, data link connector yeah so the data link connector, um, in the case of the Discovery 2, it's the J1962, I think. Um, and they also standardised on the protocol between the signals going back and forth between the, you know, the, the tool and the, the vehicle. So that was pretty cool. Uh, I think the EU then came along, so certainly over in Europe, um, the EU came along and around about 2000, 2001, and I think they created, they then created the EOBD, which st stood for basically European or EU OBD. I think it's the same as the OBD2 standard. I could be wrong on that, um, I'm, but I'm pretty sure it's, it's pretty similar to those you know, those two standards. Um, there is another one that, as, that you may hear about as well. So it's EOBD2. Now, my understanding is this is something, some sort of marketing sort of um, uh, term where it's basically a, a, um, a specification that doesn't adhere to the OBD2 standard. I think the E in this case, it doesn't stand for European, it stands for enhanced. Um, but anyway, in the case of the Land Rover, especially, you know, the TD5, it uses the EOBD, European OBD standard, which is the same, I believe, as the OBD2 standard. Right, so this is the actual connector. You need to connect the uh, the tool to the car itself. This is the J1962 uh, connector. It's basically a female 16-pin D-shaped connector. It's got two rows of eight pins. Don't know if you can see inside there. Now, there are two types of these, a Type A and the Type B. Type A is for 12-volt vehicles, and the Type B is for 24-volt vehicles. And now they have actually made a slight change in the connector. This is this has got one bar of plastic, got one strip of plastic right through the middle, which means it's a Type A. I think the 24 volt ones have a little break in the middle of it, so you've got two bits either side. And the reason they've done that is obviously to stop you plugging the wrong connector, the wrong tool into the wrong car. So this is the the 12 volt, the Type A. 
So this, I can't do this one-handed, I should got a tripod. You plug one end into the tool itself and the other end into the car. Right, so what I will say about this, particularly when I come on to do the NanoCom in the next video, make sure you plug this end into the tool first. With this particular connector here, it's quite easy if you misalign it to actually touch the incorrect pin against the uh, the matching, it's, it's easy to touch the wrong two wrong pins together. When I did this with the NanoCom, I had a big blue spark and then something went sap and then nothing worked. I'll talk about that in the next video. So best thing is plug it in this side first, tighten up the screws on the end to support it, then go and find the, uh, the OBD port to plug the other end into. And in the case of the Discovery, hang on, I'm gonna get my torch now. It's down here in the driver's footwell. Excuse my feet. And it's, oh, it is. Uh, right there. There you go. So you can just see there's one strip going across the middle. You can see the eight pins on top, eight pins at the bottom. So all you do is you get the cable, plug that into there, like so. I need like a head cam, don't I, where I just don't have to hold this camera. So that's plugged in now. As you can see, in fact, turn the torch off. As you can see the, the LCD display has started. Um, main menu, uh, what's it say on there? Discovery 2, user menu. So the way it works with this tool and the Nanocom, in fact, is when you buy the tool itself, you only get the, key, uh, you only get the security key to unlock it for one model of vehicle. So in my case, it's for the Discovery 2 TD5. Uh, no, in fact, I think it's for, I think it's for any Discovery 2. Um, so when you first get it, you are going to have to go and put a key in. I can't, I did this when I first got it. I can't remember how you do it now, but I'm thinking you put the down, down arrow into the user menu, click. And what have we got here? So there's various setup menus here tester setup so you, you can sort of test the tool itself down here security you then go into there and you'd enter the the unique code that the manufacturer sets you manufacturer sends you uh, if you want to use this for saying you've only buy yourself a you know a discovery 3 then you're gonna have to go and pay to get another key to put in there a bit annoying that is but as I plan to only ever drive probably three Land Rovers Discovery 2, a Discovery, and an old Defender. Old Defender obviously hasn't got any electronics, so I'll only have to, have to pay to get this upgraded to work on the Discovery. Right, so I'm not going to go in there now. What else have we got down here? OBD DTC lookup. So the main reason I got this was to get rid of the three Amigos. Um, what you can actually do with these is you can find any error codes that are reported from the engine. These are called DTCs, Diagnostic Trouble Codes. So it looks like you can go in here. Yeah, so here we have, um, I've not actually used this functionality, but what you can do is you can put a DTC code in there and it'll tell you what it is. Right, Owen, can you pass my pen, please? Ta. That'll do. So you've got a D-shaped connector, and on with that. The bottom, it again, several, eight pins across the top, eight pins across the bottom, strip plastic going through the middle. So now you can go through and uh, select which system you want to check. So, what we got engine, transmission, ABS. Airbag security, chassis. Go on to EMS, see if there's any error codes in there. Select the uh, the engine type, so I've got the TD5. Click enter. Ensure cable is used. Yeah. Turn ignition on. Every time you get that little, uh, little tick down there, it's expecting you to click the tick 
button here. Performing test. Okay, so we can go in now. We can see what uh, any DTCs it has. Performing tests. Okay, we've got a fault 3014, airflow, low fault. Tick. Ah, and that's it. Oh, I must admit, I was expecting more than that. So I did have the uh, the three amigos on with this car for quite some time. Um, I used this Hawkeye to go and find out what it was, and it turned out it was the. Uh, there you go. That's a better view. Um, I just needed to. T uh, I needed to change the the ABS sensors, so I went and I changed those. I changed the wheel hubs as well, and they all went. I mean, you can actually reset the codes in here. Um, so if, for example, you wanted to temporarily get rid of them, you can clear the DTCs down. That'll get rid of the three Amigos and, you know, they may or may not come back. Um, I had them for quite some time. All right, so let's, you can also go in and clear these down as well. Uh, I might try that in a minute. Right, to begin with... Right, let's see what else then. We've got... So we'll come out of the engine menu, turn ignition off. Yeah, click, tick, coming out, let's have a look what else, see if there's any ABS errors, ABS going in, okay, ensure cable is used, yep, turn ignition on, tick, product number, yeah, vehicle fitted with ABS for Discovery Series 2, okay, read DTCs, fault, historical, outlet, valve, right hand, looks like you can scroll through, DTCs, click, turn ignition off, tick, please wait, 14 seconds, Turn ignition on. All faults cleared. Awesome. So you can take it for a test drive now, see if the fault comes back or whether it's a fault or it's cleared for good. Maybe it's something you've already fixed. Let's go and check. The live data so EMS TD5 yep turn ignition on live data coolant temperature 1.8 degrees C Coolant sensor, voltage, so you can go through all the systems here and you can see what the current settings are. As you can see, I'm um, hoping you can read this. Lots of information there, you just go through and find what you want. Engine speed, naught, yep. So I wonder if you can... That's interesting then. So can I start the car then? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So on naught revs per minute at the moment. Seems to have kicked me out the... Uh, let's just go back in. Discovery 2. EMS, wasn't it? Yeah. TD5. Yeah. Yeah, live data. Oh, you see the coolant temperature going up, 9.7, 9.8, 10. So what was I looking for? Revs per minute, engine, wasn't it? You can see all the different voltages.
there you go so let's just rev the engine it's around about 850 rpm pretty cool turn the engine off right what else we got then vehicle speed voltage battery voltage Data link error. Right, what else we got then? Circuit tests. Oh, I know what it is. It's because, because the engine was running, when I did that live data, I had to turn the ignition on. Uh, not start the engine, just the ignition on. So obviously when I shut the engine down, it turned the ignition off, which is which broke the connection between the Hawkeye and the car. So I'd have to go back in and turn the ignition on again. That's good. Right, let's have a look at this then. Circuit tests. Data link error. Attempting to restart. Uh, yep, yeah, probably. Ensure ignition on. Yeah, not yet, but it will be. Okay, and go. Um, right. I'm probably not going to try any of these because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, you're going to have to go and read the manual for this, so you can go and check all these different things it's quite interesting i didn't realize even though i got this i've had this hawkeye over what two years now i've only ever used it to to read the error codes just to get rid of the three amigos so um i mean I, obviously i knew it had uh, other functionality i've just never actually used it it's very interesting though you know i might do another video with this i might just go in and try some of these um these tests because you know it's quite interesting but for the time being let's come out programming What's that then? Immobilization? <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't touching that. Uh, read ejector, set ejector. Okay. Okay. All right. I mean, like I said before, I did. I bought this Hawkeye so I could reprogram. Well, two reasons. One, because I had the three amigos going. I, I wanted to find out what the problem was. And the other thing was, I wanted to reprogram a key. So I could get a new key cut. Um, I couldn't, unfortunately, use the Hawkeye for that. Um, I'll go into that in the next video when I start talking about the Nanocom. Uh, it's not that a Hawkeye can't program keys; it can, um, but for various reasons, I well, I felt it was easier just to go and get the Nanocom. It was a bit of an emergency. I won't spoil the story now, but I was actually locked out of my car with everything. I couldn't even get in with the original key because I uh, messed everything up. So, I'll go into that later.